Patrick for having us here and we're in the middle of Vic so behind us we can see the the vineyard which is a winery and a wine region that was started from scratch yes. yeah, <laughs> so how did you how did you come to create an entire wine valley from zero what, what do you do in Chile in order to be able to do that yeah uh, I think it's interesting you know today to offer to the consumer a new vision of wines and uh, I think that project was always, like I said to you, uh, dedicated to the quality. And for that, you have to find the best place that you have the opportunity to know, you know, and you have to be sure you can produce a very good wine. For that, all the elements, you have to consider everything, you know, you have to consider all the uh, natural element in the, in the place where mm -hmm. you're making the wine, you have to consider uh, the climatic uh, vision, so you have to consider uh, which is your vision of the quality of the wine, you know, mm -hmm. what you are looking for. In my case, I was looking for creating a, a modern wine, it means with aromas, with perfumes, but at the same time with elegance. and. Always I thought in Chile it was possible to do it, but with always a very good evolution of the tannins. Mm -hmm. I think fruit you have plenty in Chile. Hence, in everywhere in Chile, because the climate we have is very good for that. But I think it's more complicated for the tannins, and it's necessary to be very, very careful where you do the production of the grape, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think this place is very unique, it's incredible. We have the condition of the ocean, all the condition of the influence mm -hmm. of the Andes. We're, we're right in the middle, aren't we're we? Middle, so we're exactly. 80 kilometers from the sea and it, almost it, 80 from the Andes. Exactly. And the other thing which is very important, the quality of the soil. Mm. It's complicated to find a correct place, you know, the perfect place where all the conditions are together. I think in Vic is that. And, uh, and how did you discover the soil? What did you do before planting to... Yeah which was quite unique, we, we did 4,000 of analysis of soil, which is very unique. Mm -hmm. Normally, <laughs> when the people start a wine, they produce a wine and they explain the wine after. They try to explain why the wine mm. can and, and is so good. In this case, Alexander V asked me to do like a research, and very high research, in the quality of the soil, then the, but I was thinking about each area in the, in the property to be sure we would have uh, 100 points in the wine. You know, we, we it's very rigorous work, mm -hmm. it's very precise work, and I think we did it. And I think we get it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's very. I mean, it's a really unique opportunity. There aren't many other places in the world where you can. By Valley, create your own DO yeah. effectively yeah, at yeah, some stage. Yeah. Well, well, well the, one of the ideas we have too, you know. Mm -hmm. I had the chance in my life, well, my education in Saint Emilion was fundamental, you know, but I had the chance to work in Napa Valley, to work in Rivera del Duero, to work in France in other places than Bordeaux, to work in Uruguay in such different uh, so, such different conditions, climatic conditions that. When I came here, I found really the perfect place. You know, we were looking at that for, we were looking for about many places, 40 places in Argentina, another 20 places in Chile, but never we found that marvelous condition we have in, 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 in Yahweh, in Vic. Mm -hmm. you know? Excellent. Good, yeah. <laughs> so you found the entire valley, you found the right soil, water yep. access, yes. the climate, the important things, and then what did you decide to plant <laughs> and why? <laughs> well, we, I think this place is for red varieties, no whites, it's maybe too hot for the whites mm -hmm. and, and if we want to have a, uh, this marvelous minerality of the whites we should go to another places in Chile but not here I think. And it was very good for, for Cabernet and Cabernet. I came with the idea to do more a blend with more 
Carmen mm -hmm. like they do the other side that of the hill in, the in a palta the, in a palta mm. like they do it in Peumo which is not so far you know but the first and second year we did the harvest you know I saw the quality of the Cabernet Sauvignon that I decided to change totally <laughs> my mind you know and but this is a respect of the fruit you know you have to respect the man like I said to you is part of the terroir but he has to understand there is some respect you have to, to you can do because you decide by yourself to do something. You have to understand mm -hmm. what the area is able to to produce correctly, and 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 I think the Cabernet Sauvignon Chile for me is fantastic. Really, we have uh, we saw it in the tasting. You know, uh, we have uh, some some typicity of Medoc, some typicity mm -hmm. of Napa Valley, and some typicity of Chile, and that is incredible to find in the same area. And also in our case, in our vision, was to create an estate bottle. Mm -hmm. We don't want to buy grape from another valleys and starting to blend everything, you know, because I think the identity of the valley has to be done by the wine, has mm -hmm. to be the reflecting by the wine. I think it's very important. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So this was a really unique opportunity to create an entire wine region and, and create your blend. And yeah. you picked Cabernet, Carmenere, like classic Chilean varieties, also a bit of Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and a touch of Syrah. Yes, yeah, I think uh, the, the Cabernet Franc and, and Syrah are very interesting for the, the perfume of the wine. They give that more... I, f I think more uh, elegance and more diversity and eccentricity of the mm -hmm. wine, which is merlot. And the merlot is for the beginning of the mouth, you know, this roundness of the merlot. I think it's very good merlot, very interesting. Uh, I think the, but, but the complexity of wine, you know, it's a, I learned very much when I, 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 I met the wines like Zinfandel, mm -hmm. like Sangiovese, like Pinot Noir. I, I, Probably I discover the the, re the reality of the perfume of the mm -hmm. wine. I think in Bordeaux it's a little bit more austere with the fruit, and it's different. But uh, I think the, with that variety, you know, you learn very much. Mm -hmm. You have the chance to create another vision of your wine. That's so. interesting. <laughs> and so Vic has its quite unique identity within this valley, but uh, but also we're in the middle of the central valleys of Chile, which are. Uh, are quite well known for blends. Yeah. What do you think is the representative blend here and why do you think it's important that Chile has these blends to represent its region instead of just the single varieties that we find in many other New World countries? Because I think each variety by itself is interesting but mm. is, how do you say, incompleto? Incomplete, Incomplete, yeah. you know. For example, Carmenere is quite interesting grape but it has no acidity. You have to bring the acidity to this wine, and it's done by the Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. You know, as the structure of the wine and the elegance of the wine is made by the Cabernet Sauvignon. The Cabernet Sauvignon needs body needs to be more powerful, and that to bring it with the Carmenere. And after that, the minerality and the aromatic, uh, like uh, uh, flowers, like violet, is done by the Syrah. And, 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 and Cabernet Franc for me has more angular tannins which can fit very well with the, the tannin of the Cabernet Sauvignon but brings some petroleum aromatic yeah. aspect of the wine and that is more, it's always subtle, it's never something which is going to dominate. break or mm. dominate or bring the wine to a revolution, it's very done, it's done by subtlety you know and that I like that, I like very much this kind of uh, uh, more romantic wines, you know. Excellent. And the last question is based on the difference between Bordeaux or Bordeaux blends and, and what's coming from here in Chile. Because obviously a lot of the varieties in these blends, they're all Bordeaux, ex with the exception of Syrah in your Syrah. case. Yeah, but, so but what is Carmenet it that makes it very, yeah, what Carmenet is it that makes it more Chilean? Well, what's I the big differences? First of all, I think the the characteristic of the wine is more aromatic wine than a Bordeaux style. Bordeaux is a little bit more austere, 
It has an excellent mouth, Bordeaux. It's very good and very elegant in the mouth. And the structure of the wine is very nice. But a mm, little bit austere wine. And I think the new consumer in the world, they like to find more aromatic aspect in the wine. They like this, um, the perfume, you know, and, uh, and, and I, they, they like to have something what is more ex exotic mm -hmm. in, in, in the perfume. Uh, the young consumer who are, to, who are starting to drink wine, it's easier for them to have something who brings some charm in the noise, you know. Um, I'm, I'm always, I'm not a typical Bordelais style because I'm, I had a chance to work in so many countries, you know, and uh, I think Chile has a perfect location to, to, to do that kind of wine, to produce that kind of wine. Uh, the wine making in Chile is quite easy because the climate, look at that, it's nameless. <laughs> and and, and uh, you, you have, uh, I think, the perfect condition when you found the perfect source. Mm -hmm. These soils we have in Vic are very, very poor. They are very old, and uh, they, they they never were uh, touched by a human being before. Mm -hmm. You know that's a very interesting thing. I think so.